I grew up in Malawi, which is a small country in southeast Africa. And when I was about 15 years old, as part of a school project, we had to get work experience. So my best friend Miriam and I, we decided that we were going to join the nurses on the mobile clinics. So every morning we woke up very early and traveled with the nurses to remote villages. These were villages where approximately there was one doctor to every 100,000 people. Miriam and I, we learned how to weigh babies, prepare vaccinations, and also fill out a lot of forms. <laughs> But one thing that struck me was that at every village we went to, the nurses would gather all the women and children together and then teach them songs. But these were not just any songs. The very first song I ever heard was a song about diarrhea. <laughs> it explained what diarrhea was, how to prevent it, and how to treat it. Now, the majority of these women were illiterate. They couldn't read or write. So by memorizing these songs, they were empowered to save the lives of their own children. I was amazed. Who could have imagined that a song had the power to literally save lives? This whole work experience had a big impact on Miriam and I. Miriam later became a nurse, and I Inspired by the power that exists in music and the arts and drama, I decided to become a filmmaker. Now, many years later, I returned back to Malawi, but this time with my husband and children in order to adopt a little baby girl from an orphanage. And while we were there, I became aware of the situation facing the girl child at the time. Less than 25% of girls in Malawi were finishing primary school. And less than 5% of girls were finishing high school. And one in every two girls was a child bride. I decided to make a movie with the hope that it would inspire change. The film is called Mercy's Blessing. I made it in 2015. It's 30 minutes long, and it's set in an African village. The story is about a teenage boy called Blessings, who has a dream to get him and his younger sister out of poverty. And he knows that the only way to do this is by going to school and getting an education. But then a twist of fate occurs, and then there's not enough money to send them both to school. Only one can go, and Blessings is chosen. He is chosen not because he's older or because he's smarter. He's chosen only because he's a boy. Now, this creates a huge conflict within Blessings, because not only is he seeing his sister being left behind, but arrangements are already being made for her to be married, and she's only 11 years old. Everything seems hopeless. But then, Blessings realizes that there is something he can do. He has a choice. Now, I'm not going to tell you the end of the movie. <laughs> Hopefully, you're going to go watch it yourself. <laughs> but to give you a feel of the film, Here's a one-minute trailer.
film highlights the strength of the human spirit, the power of choice, and the role that especially men and boys can play in standing up for justice. The film raises awareness about the equality of women and men and the importance of education. Now, the response that we received to this film was extraordinary. The film was screened in over 20 film festivals around the world, and we received 12 international film awards. Naturally, we were all thrilled. But then I began thinking, well, what was the purpose of making the movie? Was it just to send to film festivals, get awards and get recognition? Surely we had a greater purpose in mind in making it. So then we decided to experiment. We shared the film far and wide with different groups of people in different settings to see what would happen. So people began watching the movie in their homes, in their communities, in their schools, in their youth groups, and even in the workplace. And that's when we discovered what I call the magic space. This is the space that's created just after you finish watching the movie. It's a crucial moment where people, we found, are more open to change because they have, their hearts have just been touched by the story of the film. We then decided to create a resource kit with workshop questions that could accompany the film so that people could start having conversations after they finish watching the movie in that magic space. Conversations about the themes of the film and how those themes apply to their own lives and what changes they can bring about. Well, this was when we started to see the power of film in action. In Malawi, UNICEF took our film to a village. This was a village that was not sending their girls to school. 300 men, women, boys and girls came together to watch the film. The whole community came together. And after watching the film and having a discussion, almost every single mother and father promised and committed to sending their girl to school. And the girls, they wanted to go to school. In South Africa, in one high school, after this film was shown, a teenage boy stood up, and in front of everybody, he said, I need to learn how to cook. I need to learn how to wash my own clothes. Why is it that we are always letting our mothers and our sisters do all the cleaning and the housework? We also have to help. We have a role to play. And then this incredible discussion took place with all the boys. And they all agreed it was true. And there they committed in front of everybody to be of more help in the house. Now, it's quite amazing if you think about it. Because if a teacher had gone into that same school and said, OK, boys, now, come on. You need to pull your weight. You need to help more in the house. How many of those boys would have been inspired? I'm not so sure. But it's amazing to see the power of film, that with one screening of a short film, these teenage boys were inspired to make a change in their own lives and also in the lives of their mothers and sisters. In Brazil, in Sao Paulo, the government, together with a company called Class App, took the film and created a campaign around it. They showed Mercy's Blessing to about 10,000 students in different schools with the purpose of trying to reduce high school dropouts. Now, these students didn't just watch the film and have a meaningful discussion after it. No, they took it a step further. These students had the challenge now to create films with the purpose of trying to find out why did their fellow students drop out of high, of high school and how to encourage them to come back? As a result, these students created a change and youth began coming back to high school. And in the Netherlands, here where we are now, the film is also being used. In one university, 
they're using the film as part of their MBA program. And students, after watching the film, have the opportunity to reflect about their own social reality, recognizing their privileges, their prejudices, and how they can become agents of social change. Now, very soon I began to realize that our film was just a tool, a tool that could open up a space for those conversations that we need to have to happen, and it invites action. And because of its universal themes, such as love and sacrifice, and hope and despair, we found that people around the world were resonating with the story, and they wanted to use the film to inspire change. And now Mercy's Blessing is being used in over 100 countries around the world. By taking our film on this incredible journey, I have witnessed that films have the power to inspire social change. Films can be more than just entertainment. They can inspire us. They can challenge our assumptions. They can raise our awareness and focus our energies. Films have the power to transform the way we feel, the way we think, and even the way we act. Otto Scharmer, author of the book Theory U, talks about the opening and closing of our heart, mind, and will. He says that when our hearts are closing, we have cynicism. But when our hearts are opening, we have compassion. He talks about our mind, saying that when our minds are closing, we have prejudice. But when our minds are opening, we have curiosity. He talks about will, saying that when our will is closing, we have fear. But when our will is opening, we have courage. Courage to act. Now, films that inspire have the power to transform a closed heart, mind, and will to become more open. And when we are more open, then the potential for change is greater. We are more open to new ideas, new perspectives, even adopting new attitudes and new behavior. In the Baha'i writings, it states, art can better awaken such noble sentiments than cold rationalizing, especially among the mass of the people. In facing this huge challenge ahead of us, in creating a sustainable future for all. Let us learn how to harness the power of film. Let us use it as a fundamental tool in reaching our goals. Let us use it to inspire courage for change among the masses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.